I want to welcome everybody to the uh, Something Something 100th episode of Talk Python to Me. I am your host, Jay Miller. Um, our normal host, Michael Kennedy, uh, apparently had some flight issues. And, oh, no, he's here. <laughs> I'm here, I'm um, here. Hello, everyone. I, I, we we kind of talked about this, and I said, I have an idea. Trust me. And you said, okay. I trust you, Jay. This is be fun. I mean, I think a lot of people have made that mistake in the past, but... <laughs> Uh, I'm going to be interviewing you, and uh, for those that don't know, I'm Jay Miller. I, have a, I am a now six-time uh, guest on the show. Uh, I think you get a jacket for that. Uh, You're I, in the one percent. You're a one. I, I am in the one percent. The only person who's been on the show more times than me is my boss, which <laughs> is annoying because um, he will rub it in after he hears this. But yeah, Mike, we've been we've been kind of working together for what four years now? Four or five years. Four yeah, or five years. I mean, for the for those that don't know, I'm I do a little bit of marketing behind the scenes. Uh, so if you get that newsletter, if you're not subscribed to the Talk Python newsletter, you need to be. I work really hard on that. By the way, it may not come out this weekend because I'm here. Uh, just so you know. But yeah, so we've we've known each other for four or five years. Mm -hmm. And I think I was on like episode like 15 or something like that. Yeah, quite early. About developer productivity. Yeah. It was wonderful. So I, I wanted to take this time to kind of ask you questions similar to what you would do. Uh, and let's start with one of the easiest ones of why a podcast? Why a podcast? Well, I had done a lot of, a lot of different things trying to teach people coding and evangelize coding. And, and that involved things like going to user group talks yep. or doing trainings and all these were like, hey, it's awesome. 20 people showed up and are really engaged, but what if you leverage the internet to reach more people, you know? Yeah. Uh, that was really one of the, the motivations is just how can you, you know, have a bigger impact? And when I got started with Talk Python, there were zero Python podcasts. I'm like, why are there zero Python podcasts? There have been some before, yeah. but they'd all shut down. And I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. Such a vibrant community and no one to interview and share the stories of it. So here we are, seven, eight years, eight years later. Yeah, and, and I mean, you've really trailblazed that industry. I think since your show, we've had uh, Tobias started podcasting mm -hmm. it. Uh, Dan has a real Python podcast. I think Chris is running. Hey, is that Chris right there? Yeah, hey. we, that, speak, that is Chris. Speak, getting, speaking getting of, right speaking of the Real Python podcast, right there, we uh, I think Sean's here from Teaching Python. He's Sean T. Boris, and yeah. we've even seen it expand into kind of smaller niches like Django, and like we have like the Django chats. Yeah, Django chats. Some great. of those shows, and I mean, you know, a little show Python Community News on YouTube. Go check that out. <laughs> uh, but you know, it's it's great that you know you started this thing because there wasn't a thing there, and then afterwards. You know, a ton of shows showed up, and I, I see some other you know podcasters in the audience. I think I see like a, a Python Bytes and Test and Code uh, Brian Aachen here as well. Uh, how does it how does it feel to see that you know now that you kind of kickstarted things, the ecosystem is thriving? I think it's fantastic. I like I said, the goal was to share the stories of this community that weren't being told and. And now I think so many people have taken up that torch. It's, it's great. And I think there's room for all of us. We all have kind of our own special flavor and people can gravitate to what they like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and you've interviewed a few hundred people. <laughs> I think we're over 450 different guests so did far you, on the show. Did you, did you think there was that much to talk about in the Python space? <laughs> so, <laughs> I, had, uh, I had a plan, Jay, I had a plan. And it involved five episodes. Okay. I'm like, okay, the first five, the first one was me announcing the show. So four, I'm like, okay, I know four people <laughs> who I can interview about this. Uh, I talked about SQL Alchemy. Uh, I talked about Pyramid, the web framework, and a couple of other things. And I'm like, all right, now what? But thankfully, so many people were really excited that, hey, there finally is a Python podcast. Yeah. Like, that was a great show. You should talk to so-and-so. And this, you may, have you considered this? And now it's just, you know, a snowball going downhill. It's... It's, it's great, but I, I had no idea it would make it this far, no. That's awesome. Yeah. So I, I know that just between, you know, you and I working together, we have developed things for the show to make the show easier to manage and maintain. Mm -hmm. has, has there been any projects that you've developed that have kind of come out of inspiration from the show? 
oh yeah, there's tons of software behind the scenes that are all about automation and different kinds of things, uh, both for the podcast itself and the courses. You know, it's, it's amazing just how much these little tiny scripts or little things you can write in an afternoon that will just completely change your work day. You're like, you know what, this used to be such a pain and now it, it's completely automatic or it's almost automatic. Um, you know, really great transcripts, of some of the new AI stuff. Um, used to ship the files all over to different servers. Now I've, I've got it set up differently. But you know, just a ton of software that is constantly written. It's, it's, it's never ending fun. And it's also a really cool playground. Yeah. Like, I really want to learn fast API or I want to learn this thing. Let me just use that for this little small project I got. And now I, I have some experience with it. It's great. I, I have definitely gotten to witness, like, Oh hey, just add this thing, and now it'll it'll run and do all this stuff. And then usually I come in and I go, hey, I built something too, and you're like, I can't get it to work. And I go, oh yeah, I broke it. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, your entire show is down. Now. I'm, That's I'm, fine. I think I've done that yet. I haven't. I haven't. I've brought an entire networks down. I don't think I've brought in the podcast down yet. I think the thing that took the 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 site down for the longest was the walrus operator. The walrus the operator. Walrus operator. <laughs> Shout out to the walrus operator. That's my favorite part <laughs> you, of Python. Emily. Like, <laughs> I, thank you, Emily. No, the walrus operator is awesome. But when the servers were running three seven and I was running three eight on my dev machine, I have these little management scripts for all this kind of stuff we're talking about, right? Yeah. And I'm like, well, that part's not part of the website. I'll do that. I'll I'll write walrus operator code and all sorts of stuff. When I shipped it, the framework tried to scan to see if there was any routes in there, and it couldn't parse it, and it just couldn't start. I'm like. Why won't there? Web I haven't even touched it. What's going on? I'm like, oh, the walrus operator took it down. That's funny. So yeah. you've interviewed a ton of people, and I'm not going to ask you to say who's your favorite person to interview because we know the answer is me. Yes. But um, <laughs> I, I want to. What were some of the most surprising interviews that you had? There's. There's a whole different, there's a whole set of categories, different categories of surprising, right? And your shows were very interesting and I really enjoyed talking to you about them. They were, they're really inspiring because they're, they're not just, here's this API, but they're, they were higher level, right? Like developer productivity and stuff. However, I would say the stuff that surprises me the most is where people are doing things you wouldn't have expected with Python. Like, oh, hey, we're actually using machine learning in Python to find exoplanets in old kind of stale Kepler data. Yeah. And so there's this group in uh, Oxford who found 50 exoplanets running machine learning across data they thought was already analyzed and done. And, and you would learn weird things like they said, we used to have grad students do it and that was okay, but it was really variable, like the mood of the grad student mattered. <laughs> For example, at Oxford, they always had cookies and coffee at three, so more exoplanets were found after three than before three. There's no difference in the data, but you know, and they're like, if we could bring some automation, that might make science a little more scientific. Developer productivity <laughs> tip, add cookies and coffee to your daily routine, right? Yeah, for sure, for sure. So, so I'm thinking about uh, a particular episode that I was on where you had uh, Rivers Cuomo from Weezer. That was one of the more notable here. ones, yes. That was, I just, I remember getting the message from you of like, hey, you're going to be on the show this week. And I was like, I, I, I can't, I've got it. He's like, no, 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 you're, you are going to be on the show this <laughs> you, week. You want to be here, trust me. Yes. yes. And then just being like, having to pick my jaw off the floor because like, you know, you had a rock star on, Literal rock star, on yeah. the show. And I, I think that that, that is one of the beauties of podcasting is that just like Python is kind of stretched outside of, you know, developer community and is kind of branched into data science and branched into automation and you know hopefully we'll see python in more and more spaces mm -hmm. like we're seeing it in places that no one would expect like on stage <laughs> like with rivers cuomo like what was that like how did how did that happen so rivers has an assistant who coordinates a bunch of stuff and okay. sent me a message and said uh the assistant sent me a message rivers would like to be on your show i'm like that is amazing <laughs> But you do understand it's a Python show, and I hadn't realized how much coding he had done. So he, I actually got to go out and spend some time with him when he was in Portland at a concert. Rub it in. Rub it in. Yeah, yeah. I, I so like it. we hung out a little bit. He's like, let me show you all the code I'm writing. And we just had a great time geeking out before the show. And 
I, after I saw him, like, you have to be on the show. What you were doing is so awesome. So yeah, he's doing legitimately cool stuff. Um, I think uh, now he's actually contributing to open source and Python as well. Yeah, I saw him and Brett Cannon going back forth on some work. Let, on some let's GitHub not talk repo. about Brett Cannon. He's not here right now. He'll be back tomorrow. You can ask him <laughs> questions about that at the Ask Me Anything. Anyway, yeah, it was really awesome to have him on the show. It was cool to have you you there as well. That was a real popular one. That was in the vein of kind of what you opened this conversation with. It was a bunch of little automation tools yeah. that don't count as like, hey, I built Instagram, but they're like, this is a really amazing thing I built. Even if it only took a day, it, it was super powerful, right? Yeah. yeah. All right, so we're about halfway through the interview. Uh, we understand that people want to get to talks, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and raffle off a pair of Surface earbuds. Also, if you're wanting to catch the talks, feel free to go do that. This will be on the podcast. Where can people find the podcast while you're uh, you're looking for a number here? I don't want to be biased. You want to influence me? I'm not even looking. Yeah, find TalkPython.fm or if you go to your pod, uh, any podcast player and just search for TalkPython. Okay, okay. Right, how do I read the number? Yeah, just read the number. Read the number. All right. I wasn't paid that much for this, so. Uh, <laughs> the last four numbers are 548. Five, four, eight. Congratulations. Thank you. Love the Congratulations. <laughs> so going, going back to that, that kind of that idea of like, hey, these are little tools and now they're being used with like super amazing people in the Python space. Have you heard of anybody getting into Python because of your show? I, I've heard of a lot of people getting into there. You know, it's when I started the show, going back to the beginning a little bit. When I started the show, I expected, well, I tried to think, well, who will listen to a show about the people making these frameworks and these libraries? It's got to be the most hardcore developers, the people who maybe wrote that library or are really, really into it, right? Yeah. And sure, people like that listen, and it's great. But there's a bunch of people who listen, and it'll say things like, I'm starting to understand what you all are talking about after six weeks. I'm like, why have you listened to six weeks and not known what I'm talking about? It's, it's really a kind of an honor, but like, why would you do that? That just, and what they do is they're, they're using it as like language immersion. Like mm. If I just immerse myself in this community, soon enough, I will be a Python person. Like if I move to Brazil, maybe I could learn Portuguese if I just force myself to it. Yeah. And it's same thing. There's a lot of people like that. So there are a lot of people kind of on that journey, yeah. And then I guess in the same vein, has any of the feedback from the show that you've done kind of gone into some of the other things that you do, like uh, talk Python training? Constantly, constantly. I, I'll, I'll talk about something like, this might be interesting and everybody's, this is so amazing, so so interesting, I, I want to learn more. I'm like, okay, well, maybe maybe I should put some more effort into it, either have more shows or do a course or, or something like that. Yeah, absolutely. Very cool. So, I guess I got one more question, and then I'm gonna go. I'm gonna do the thing that you do at the end. All right. Uh, so you have you the show itself is kind of migrated. It, it started as a podcast only, and then I saw you start doing some videos, and then of course the courses were always kind of a big part of this. And now you've kind of integrated that that live stream component to it as well. How was how was making that change from it being a you know, pre-recorded, pre-talk, just you and the person you're interviewing, to now you have all of those things, but also a live audience listening over the internet. Yeah, so smash the bell on YouTube, right? Yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> like and subscribe, <laughs> ring the bell, <laughs> yeah, exactly. all that stuff. Yeah, so seriously though, it's it was a big decision to make it a live show. And there were two things I was worried about. One is, will the guests who used to just sort of call up one-on-one -on -one and say, let's have a conversation and then you'll edit it right. Because if I say something, I'm, I'm really new to this and if you, you edit it, I think I can build up the confidence to be on there like, oh, guess what, we're live streaming it to the world and it'll be written in ink on YouTube. You know, like, <laughs> that's a different sort of deal. And for the most part, people haven't minded. Okay. At first they're like, I'm a little nervous. I'm like, you know, it, it's fine, really. You'll be fine. No, it's all. It has been fine every time. It's always like the first time you go on a live stream. You're like, I don't, I don't know what to do. Do I stare at the camera? Do I look at the screen? Like, but then after that, they're like, Oh, that was so fun engaging with the audience live yeah. and seeing the comments and doing all that stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And it, it, from a logistics perspective, it's taken the effort down a little bit. You, okay. Ironically, like doing yeah. more, you think the live stream would add something, but. We have people join the live stream and ask questions, so we can kind of make the audience part of the show. I'm like, oh, I should have asked that question, but 
you know, so and so in the, the live chat did. That helps. And then also, if it's already live, you don't have to edit it as much because it's kind of, you're a little more on focus because yeah. you're like, instead of like, hey, can we do that again? Or can we talk about, or can we pause it? Like, you know, we're live streaming, it's going to go. Yeah. And it works out, uh, but it, it kind of takes away some of the, the going back and fixing it up. Yeah, yeah. But it's, it's been really cool. I got into it. I think the real motivation to get into it was through um, a common friend of ours, Cecil Phillip. Okay. Yeah. And I interviewed him and Brian Clark about their um, live streaming, their developer stuff. Okay. And I was like, that's, that's pretty cool what they're doing. I, how are you doing it? And the stuff like, over at Stripe that they're doing? Or? No, no, when he was at um, Microsoft. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Some of the like Ask the Expert stuff that we do. Yeah, on. that kind well, of Well, now stuff. we're doing it on the Microsoft YouTube channel. I was like, the YouTube at Microsoft developer. Right on. Uh, Cool. So yeah. So anyway, he got me inspired watching what they were doing and got me using things like Streamyard and yeah, it's real good. Very awesome. I love it. All right. So normally you have a you have some rapid fire questions at the end. So I have some rapid fire questions for you. We're at PyCon 2023. What was your first PyCon US? My first PyCon US, I think, was in Portland, my hometown. Okay. In 2015. In 2015. Uh, 2015. 2016. The irony was, for that one year, I was living in Germany, so I had to fly back, <laughs> rent a hotel, stay a mile from my house, who someone else lived in it at the time because I was renting it, oh, to wow. them, and then go to PyCon. So it was like a huge trip, even though it was only two miles, three miles from my house. But it was a great time. What is the one conference talk that you always go back and, and listen to or watch? Oh, the one conference talk. Oh, boy. <laughs> it's. I would say... The Birth and Death of JavaScript by uh, Barry, uh, Gary Bernhardt, which is, I don't, have you seen this? I think I've seen it once. It's, whenever I got to do uh, reference stuff with like low level JavaScript and, and stuff, I mean, I know it's, this is Python and all, but uh, I think he gave that at a Python conference as a, like a comedy thing, but it's also a really interesting <laughs> like history of JavaScript as both, you know, drama. I don't know, it, it, if you haven't seen it, it's worth checking out. All right, two more rapid fire questions. What is your favorite addition or update to Python since you've been using it? I thought it was going to, I almost started like, oh, that's easy. But then there's two, there's two things that are okay. really, really, okay, really. you can do two. All right, I'm going to do, I'm going to do two. I'm going to take two. Async and await, type hints. Okay, shout out to type hints. Type hints. Shout is, out, yeah. F strings are probably up there for me. F strings are like F in the yes. top five. Type hints are definitely up there. Yeah. Walrus operator, you yeah. got you, a special you place a whole in my heart. You can take a, you take a down. whole website down in a matter of seconds with <laughs> no, that The thing. walrus operator is great. And, right. and then the, the last question is one that you normally ask. What is your favorite Python module or package? Yeah, yeah. What one? There's a bunch of interesting ones I run across with on um, Python Bytes. Uh, it's like Brian Aachen. Uh, we, we find a bunch there. The one that is really cool to me is Unsync. It just okay. kind of unifies threading, multiprocessing, and async and await in like a nice, cool way. I, I haven't been able to use it as much as I'd like, but I really like that one. And I just want to give a shout out to Latexify. Okay. The latex You sure it's not Latexify? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't, you don't, you don't, want, you don't want the Latex people, yeah, 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 or, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. LaTeX people yeah, no, yeah. coming after uh, us. Let me, let me reset. <laughs> I meant uh, Latexify. Uh, you can put a decorator onto a function. Okay. A Python function that does math inside and will write the symbolic mathematical representation of the Python code you wrote. Oh, that's really cool. It's insane. That's really it's, cool. It can't do everything, but it'll be like, okay, well, that's an infinite sum from zero to infinity of this. You know, like, well, how does it know? It's insane. <laughs> Anyway. That's awesome. Well, Mike, uh, again, thank you so much. Again, we've known each other for half a decade now. I hope, I hope we, we make it to a decade and more of, of working together and doing Talk Python stuff. And again, give people one more opportunity to know where they can learn more about the show. Yeah, if you're not subscribed, check it out, talkpython.fm, or look for Talk Python in your podcast players. Really, really appreciate everyone. I mean, since I'm on this side of the microphone, <laughs> Right, and I, I genuinely want to say thank you to everyone here, but everyone who listens to the show. It's been such an honor to, and, and it's so cool to be able to do that. You know, that's my full-time job now is running the podcast. That's and, awesome. And I just, when I started, I thought, oh, this would be a cool hobby on the side. I'll, like I said, five episodes, and I've got to figure it out from there. And it's just been such a great response from everyone and thankful every day. 
and, and thank you for working. I, I also, 10 years, <laughs> let's do it, it'll be easy. Yeah, we'll, we'll make it happen. And, and thank you for letting us host this event at the, at the Microsoft booth. And I think we actually have a gift for you as well. Aaron, do you have one of the... What? We have an extra pair of Surface earbuds. Oh, that's awesome. Especially for you. Uh, as a thank you, one, for doing this, but also a thank you for all that you do within the Python community. Uh, everyone, this has been Michael Kennedy. I've been Jay Miller. This has been Talk Python Live. Let's give Michael a hand, wonderful hand, for all that he's done for the past several years. Thank you, everyone. Hey, Mario. Hey, Mike. Great to, great to see you here at the conference. I'm happy to meet you. Yeah, same here. And, you know, first of all, before we get into it, just tell people quickly, who, who are you? Sure. Introduce yourself. Uh, my name's Mario. I live in Southern California, and I write a blog called Python by Night, mm -hmm. which, you know, it's my hobby thing I do when the, you know, the kid's asleep, when my wife is asleep. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what I do. Yeah. Some people play games. We, yeah. we write code or write, write code. blogs or yeah. whatever. Awesome. So how's, how's the commerce going for you? Oh, man, I'm having a great time. Are you? It's, it's my second PyCon. Mm -hmm. And this morning I gave a lightning talk about being a, either a fly on the wall or a b busy worker bee. And I've been a busy worker bee. <laughs> yeah, you said the first time you came here, we were speaking at lunch, you said the first time you came here, you kind of just held back, you are kind of just observing and, and watching from the outside, and you kind of dove in with your <laughs> feet first. And... You know, I, I tend to... I tend to be in the background most of the time, but yeah, I saw a tweet, I think, asking for help over at the Python Software Foundation booth last year. And includes thought, beanbags, by the way. Inc it includes beanbags. Anyway, I went and helped out last year, met a lot of cool people. Then I just thought I should volunteer more. I got to meet a whole bunch of people I had only heard of or seen online, like some, to me, Python heroes. And I thought this was excellent. So this year I just dove in and tripled that or quadrupled that, I guess. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Seems like you're having a great time. I'm having a great time. Awesome. Yeah. What has your plan been? Some people try to go all the talks. Some people hallway track it. Some people just go to the parties. What's your, what's your plan? Uh, let's see. So I guess I was so intent on getting my tutorial, which was on Wednesday, the very first tutorial, that I hadn't even made a plan. Uh -huh. I just was so focused on that. <laughs> Once I gave the tutorial, I, I, I was breathing easy. But I had already volunteered to help with the online platform. I was helping with the booth again. So that kind of kept me busy. I had planned to attend a couple talks. I've only been to two, maybe. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So the, the plan was survive the tutorial yes. and then figure it out. For and there. then figure it out. How'd it go? It was HTMX, right? One of the... Fine technologies integrated with Python. Fantastic. I feel like I've been talking about it all conference. I, I've talked to people individually. I had an open space about it. I talked about it at lunch. So it's, it's, there's a real kind of a very palpable energy that mm -hmm. people feel when they see what it can do. It's pretty yeah. exciting. A bunch of people have yeah. been putting off learning JavaScript because they felt they have to. And you're like, wait, you don't actually have to do that. You don't have to. You don't have to. <laughs> you really, just keep, I, just keep I, it Python. I haven't learned JavaScript. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Not knocking on the people who have and they're welcome to but if you don't want to you shouldn't be made to yeah it's not an it's not an either or it's it's both and but if you if you don't have to you don't have to yeah the irony is even um node.js javascript people are like it because yeah. they don't have to write front-end javascript they can write back-end javascript <laughs> right there, yeah. there's something in it for everyone yeah so that's been mostly it i i love the hallway track i love meeting people i mm -hmm. i got a picture with ned who you know he gave an awesome opening keynote you know all sorts of People that I'm meeting for the first time, other people I met last year. It's fantastic. Yeah, awesome. Love it. What's your big takeaways? What has stood out for you? I mean, there's a bunch of cool stuff back here behind us at the expo hall and other things you probably saw at talks. Like, what, what stood out? What stood out? I think, you know, part of it is just coming, coming away from it from these past couple of years that have been tough. Just not seeing a lot of people. And, and it, it is still kind of weird to see a lot of people you feel that kind of hesitancy people are still kind of feeling it out but in spite of it all i just think the python community embraces the people of all walks of life no matter where you're coming from even flies like myself who tend to be you know trying to masquerade as a bee even so i feel like it's a safe space to be vulnerable to learn a lot and to teach a lot yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's a very welcoming space and we're stronger together. 
that means we ought to take time to be together, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah. Right. Right on. Well, thanks for taking the time to share your experience. Great to see you. All right. Awesome. Yeah? Thank awesome. you. Yeah. Thanks. Hey, Nick. Right. How you doing? Hey. Hey, Michael. Hey, it's good to see you. Good to see you too. Yeah. In person this time. Because yes. Last time person. it was on Python Bytes, right? Yes. Last time it was on Python Bytes. Yeah. But uh, here on PyCon. Yes. Yeah. PyCon 2023. Yeah, so I just wanted to get together with a couple of folks, including you, and just ask, you know, what's your PyCon experience this year? How's it going? It has been actually quite amazing. This year was the first time I gave a talk at PyCon, my okay. first ever talk. How did it go? It went really well. Yeah. I think I felt so uh, encouraged by the Python community, uh, people that came up to me and really appreciated what I had to say, and that made me feel more engaged and wanted need to do it again. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Fantastic. What was it on? Uh, it was on improving the transportation networks mm -hmm. using Python. Mm -hmm. As a data scientist for Trimble Transportation, I work in the transportation industry and they face a lot of problems in terms of reducing waste, optimizing their networks. And that's what my team at Trimble do day to day. Yeah. So I needed to share with the Python community the kinds of things that we do and try to really get at the, like, the, the core of it yeah, and show that we use really a lot of Python to do it. That sounds awesome. I'm just kind of wondering as you're telling me that, like, do you get extra frustrated at traffic jams and stuff because you know <laughs> behind the scenes how much it could be better? I get trusted, just frustrated at when my Amazon package doesn't come on time. Yeah, okay. So I, <laughs> but then again, I also feel a lot of empathy too because I know these drivers that are driving. Yeah. It's a lot. I think like half the traffic in the world might actually be Amazon drivers. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, more, um, here, hold on, let me move this real quick. There you go. Tell me about what you thought this year. It seems like the, the conference, people are really happy to be back, but you know, what, what stood out for you? I think what stood out for me is the number of new attendees we still got. Yeah, quite a few, yeah. Yeah, quite a few. And it's pretty amazing because there were a lot of layoffs and economic struggles and, people, and you know the conferences it's not like it's always they're all free and but people still came and i think that's partly due to the psf and the great work they do with their you know financial program right some of the scholarships yeah companies that we see here in the booth really understanding the importance of sending their people out here so it's really great to see all those first-time attendees mm -hmm. yeah yeah excellent and you said you're Kind of trying the hallway track out this year? Yes, that is a secret feature of uh, PyCon. The one thing not on YouTube, not yes. live stream, none of that. None of that. And honest, I, I was at the keynote with Ned Batch Elder, and he really talked about talking to people mm -hmm. because we have, and also like Marietta, the chair of, P, of, of PyCon this year, mm -hmm. talked about there's 2,000 people here, like over 2,000 people here. And this is only time you're going to get to talk to them. Yeah. So I upped it, made a conscious effort. Yeah, sorry, got cut off there, but uh, the hallway track. Yeah, the hallway Ned track. Ned talked about talking to people. Yeah, Ned, talk about, Ned and Marietta talked about talking to people, so I made a conscious effort to try and interact with the fellow people that are walking around these hallways and this expo booth and does get into understand. And I really got a lot of like really nice interactions. Yeah. I met up with old friends, people I met at PyCon, mm -hmm. that we're going to do activities together and all that stuff. So has been really, really, really like fruitful. Yeah, awesome. Well, great to run into you. Same, uh, likewise. Yeah, yeah. And thanks for, thanks for taking the time to talk to everyone and sharing your, your experience. See Bye, ya. guys. Bye. Bye. Hey, Sean. Hey, Mike. How's it going? Uh, it's fantastic to see you again and in person. I imagine know. that. I know. First time in a few years. It's been great. It has since the before times. I know, right? <laughs> since the before times. But here we all are back together at PyCon and... Yeah, it's, it's great. Before we get into that, just tell people quickly about yourself. Sure. Fellow podcaster. Sure. So my name is Sean Tiber. I'm a senior cloud engineer at Mondelez International, which mm -hmm. nobody knows except for we make all of the Oreos and the Nilla wafers and Cadbury chocolates, all the good stuff. And we also do a lot of really cool stuff in the cloud. So I'm also the co-host of the Teaching Python podcast. I feel like I'm missing my right arm because yeah. Kelly couldn't make it this yeah, time. Shout out to Kelly. <laughs> Kelly, you should be here. We miss you. Yeah, well, we'll get her next year, you know. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. and just uh, here running the uh, Education Summit on Thursday and attending the rest of the conference and enjoying it like any other Pythonista. How was the Education Summit? It's amazing. We had some wonderful speakers, educators coming from all over the country, from all over the world. We had people speaking from as far away as South Korea, 
uh, at the Education Summit, and it's the one time of year when people who are teaching computer science and teaching Python specifically get a chance to come together and talk about what mm -hmm. they do with other people. It's just a unique experience. Yeah, it's excellent. And if you're teaching actual students, it's hard to get away, right? You've got the school year and you've yep. got a structure around that, so it's a big deal. Yeah, it's, it's been a great experience. We did some workshops talking about the impact of generative AI on education, some of the implications of that, and just you know, tried to figure mm -hmm. out what it's going to look like in the future. So what did you decide chat GPT is going to do to our education system? Well, we still have way more questions than we have answers, but okay. we also are looking at it from the lens of there have been other tools that have transformed education. Calculators were supposed to sure. ruin the teaching of math, and yet we figured that out. So yeah. we're confident we can do the same here. Same thing for search. And the internet also kind of broke it, right? How's your, how are you going to test if people know history, if they can just type in, when was the War of 1812? Right, and we, what we found is that we, these are skills that we can teach. We can teach students how to search more effectively, how right. to find things, how to solve problems. And I think with generative AI, it's about how to evaluate what's happening, what you're asking for, and making sure that it is appropriate to the uh, problem you're trying to solve. Right. How do you ask good questions? And then how do you assess whether it's real, what it said? Exactly. Interesting. Exactly. All right, well, what stood out for you at the show so far? How's, how's it been? I mean, it's the people, like always. It's the people mm -hmm. getting to see everyone, getting to have those great conversations, to sit down and have lunch together and talk about things. And just, I find myself looking at everyone's badges to figure out where they're coming from and yes. what kind of cool work they're doing. And I'm just curious about what, how they're using Python and how I could, uh, connect with them and make something cool happen together. It's always surprising. You run into such, such cool people, and that is my favorite part as well. It's just kind of the, honestly, the hallway track. I know not, not dissing the speakers. I'm looking forward to those talks on YouTube, but it's the parts that are not recorded and are spontaneous that really make it a, you know, worth coming to, I think. That's true, and I've been enjoying the talks too. There's been some really phenomenal talk tracks this year. We're just seeing, like, I think a, a new you know, wave of energy coming out of the pandemic. Yeah. And I can't, I can't wait to go to Pittsburgh next year and do this all again. I know. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks for taking the time to share your experience. It's my pleasure, Michael. Thanks. You bet. Bye. Bye. Hey, Chris. <laughs> hey, Mike. How are you doing today? Uh, really good. Really good. Enjoying PyCon. How about you? I am having an absolute blast here. It's, it's always fun, isn't it? Oh, it's, it's, uh, it is, this is my favorite conference. The, the energy, the vibe, the, the people, the, the, Willingness to share mm -hmm. is, bar none, the best conference that I've ever attended. Yeah, it's and it I've been is, to a lot. Yeah, I know you have. <laughs> it, it really is unique in that regard. Tell people quickly about yourself. Hey, everybody. My name is uh, Chris Williams. I am the host of the V Brown Bag podcast. I'm a DevRel manager for HashiCorp and um, an AWS hero. Yeah, awesome. And I've been on your brown bag a few times that's been very fun you're so a friend of the v brown bag show i'm a friend, I, of, I'm of, a friend of talk python <laughs> <laughs> that is right yeah we're all friends here it's amazing Yay! so you know how's this commerce going for you how is it in 2023 it's been going really well mm -hmm. i'm glad that that there's a bit more energy than than last year it's there's there's more more interest um it's it's been i think people are just exuberant to yeah. be out of the house and meeting new folks and getting back into the vibe of the before times. Yeah, what, what we, are we miss going? people, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. Zoom is fine. But it's but not it's a patch not, on actually it's, it's, hanging out with folks. It's not a replacement. That's Correct. right. Yeah, That's right. totally. So what, what's your game plan here? Are you on hit all of the talks? Are you on hallway track? Are you trying to get all the swag? What's going on here? So I'm, I'm actually changing it up a little bit this year. Okay. I, I love the hallway track and, mm -hmm. and meeting folks. So I, I found an entire contingent of people in Boston that I didn't even know were out there. Yeah. Um, the keynotes have been, I, I am now trying to find ways to improve my public speaking. Yeah. So paying attention to truly good folks like James and Ned and, yeah. and their keynotes were, were master classes in presentation and humorous pauses and things of like yeah. that. And, and so I'm furiously scribbling down notes like, oh, that sounded great. I'm going to try to encrypt that. Yeah, you can, you can watch the talks or you can attend the talks or you can study the talks. Yes. And I, whenever I go there, as somebody who's done a ton of public speaking, I'm like, oh, that was nice. I don't know if people caught that, but they appreciated that if yes. they didn't. It, yeah. It, it was, so yeah, that's... So I'm, I'm, that's doing, I'm doing the keynotes as a, as a study session. Mm -hmm. I am doing the hallway track. Uh, I, if generally, if something is going to be recorded, I will catch it after the fact. So, so I, I tend to 
not do them unless there's something that I want to talk to the presenter about, like right. on the spot. Then, then, I will, then I will attend that. But I'm just, I'm just trying to catch up with some friends. A, a good friend of mine spent an inordinate amount of time teaching me new things in Python over the past couple of days. He's a, he's a uh, contributor. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, was, he was showing me some stuff that as a, as a newbie developer, I've, I've just, I'm kind of too dumb to know the right questions to ask. And, and I know that people don't, don't like saying you're too dumb. I, nobody's too dumb. Right, but, there's no but, dumb questions. But, well, you do need to sort of find your way. And know, right. Know, right? So. The, the questions that I don't know I need to ask yet. Yeah, exactly. sure. So, so yeah, it's, it's just been really, really good to catch up with folks, learn new things, and, and absorb as much as humanly possible in three days. Uh, yeah, it's, it is tiring, but it's fun. Homer's is fun. After parties are fun. Yep, yep. Yeah, really, really good stuff. So thanks. Before I let you out of here, like what, what in Python are you excited about right now? So I'm going to be checking out the, uh, the new releases in 3.12. They were, uh -huh. they, they were making some announcements on F-strings that, that I need mm -hmm. to dig into. Like, that we're making F-strings better. I'm like, okay, yeah. how? Yeah. <laughs> so so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be doing a lot of Googling after everything is said and done uh, to figure it out. And, and as a content creator myself, I will be spending a lot of time uh, parsing through the stuff that I've been making <laughs> uh, and, and uh, you know, just fi finding new ways to... Uh, Reach out to people, get right. content. I mean, I don't know about you, but for me, this whole experience is a great way to find interesting people to talk to. Like you could have people on Veeam Roundbag, right? There's a, there's a bunch of resumes they didn't know they submitted to you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I have, the, the I have been, been, I've been scribbling down names and uh, my, my, little, my little notepad on my phone is filling up furiously as, as I find people to pester after this. Awesome. Well, thanks for taking your time to share your thoughts. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. Yeah, you bet. Bye. Hey, Ray. Hey. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. Uh, great to meet you. You as well. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Thank you. Tell people quick, quick who you are, a bit uh, about yourself. Let's see. So I'm Ray McLinden. I'm actually a data scientist at the mm -hmm. Kansas City Fed. Uh -huh. I mostly work in natural language processing, that kind of fun stuff. Yeah. Oh, that sounds really awesome. Yeah. So just talking to people about their PyCon experience and you know, how many times you've been here? So this is my second PyCon. Okay. My first one was last year, yeah. sort of like right on the back <laughs> of everybody getting back together from the pandemic. Yeah, so I'm not sure how rep representative your experience was last time. It was a little, a little different, but how is it this year? Oh, um, really enjoying it. I actually gave a tutorial this year, oh, you did? which what was, it was exciting. Uh, feature engineering is for everyone. Uh huh. So trying to just kind of share our knowledge of feature engineering. I co-presented that with a, with a coworker of mine, Leah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it was fantastic. We had a great time. Yeah, you had a good experience doing it? Absolutely. Looking forward to doing it again. Cool. And what library? Was that like PyTorch or what was it? Oh, that's really interesting. So it was a mix. There was some exploration with Y Data Profiler. Okay. And then there was building various features. Some of it was kind of just using pandas or numpy mm -hmm. and uh scikit learn we use yeah, some sure. of, we use some of the libraries for feature engineering that are built into that so it's a mix of libraries yeah mm -hmm. cool well what stood out to you so far this year well i guess the interesting part that i did was i went to open spaces mm -hmm. i didn't do that the previous year yeah, yeah. and i went to one this year around civic data so that was really fascinating yeah yeah enjoyed the the real community vibe and learning about, I guess, honestly, how difficult it is to get your hands on civic data, quite frankly. Yeah, I can imagine that it is. But, you know, we can complain a lot about the government and, and systems. And that's easy to do. But at the same time, like, we have all this technology and all this data and people, people can really put in, you know, make a difference. You know, I see actually the U.S. Digital Services have a booth over there, right? And that's kind of like trying to bring right. people in from industry to say, like, look, you built Instagram, now could you help us build yes. something else for the government we could, so people won't complain. It's, it's kind of cool, actually. Yeah, so they were at the Civic Data Group. Oh, they were? And I hate to say it, I had never heard of the U.S. Digital <laughs> Service before. So I was really excited to hear about the, the efforts and the work that they're doing, including some of the like, best practices guides mm -hmm. around UX and UI that they even provide. So. Yeah, it's, they're a cool, a cool service. I um, interviewed David on TalkPython Python years ago, but uh, yeah, maybe I should talk to them again. But anyway, it's, it's a cool service. So what stood out to you this year? Strangely enough, I, I come to PyCon, I expect some really technical talks, to be honest. I, that's an expectation. It was really the keynote from the first day with Ted, mm. where he kind of broke down like communication. Yeah. 
that strangely that was the thing that stood out the most to me i've heard so many good things from his keynote and and i was doing preparing for a live event that started the minute it ended so i couldn't be there I'm like oh but i'm gonna watch it on youtube and i'll i'll check it out so cool. absolutely yeah you've been walking around doing the hallway track a little bit as well and joining me and people that's right yeah i sure have i bumped into a few folks and we've been throwing ideas around mm -hmm. you know I'm really big into the whole GPT thing. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. wild. Yeah. So it's been interesting to see some folks that are really thinking deeply about ethics and security in that space and mm -hmm. giving me new ideas to, to bring back. Yeah, cool. There's a lot of ML and a lot of AI stuff around here this year. So, all right. Well, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for taking your time. Appreciate it. Yeah. yeah.